It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3 and you are just in time as we're about to have a very interesting chat. Now, when it comes to gender roles, traditionally women are seen as more nurturing and caring and therefore as homemakers, while men are seen as the breadwinners and the protectors. However, in recent decades, it's become a much more common to see these days that those old age old gender stereotypes are being challenged. Now, many men choose to stay home and care for their children full time while their wives go out and thrive in their careers. Absolutely. Now, here to discuss this morning about uh, this well important and interesting topic, Councillor Marianne Gush, mental health practitioner, Lynn Obrey, as well as modern day woman and content creator who looks fantastic this morning, Domiso <laughs> Penyane. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much. It's lovely. And I I'm excited for this chat because it's been, it's been, well, exciting to see the change in how people view the specific gender roles and you know what are those gender roles and it's, I'm, I'm glad to have you guys here to unpack it because we have seen this big change over the past while uh, I, I think with my view with regards to gender roles it's quite modern you know uh, I'm all for you know powerful women going out there within their relationships and doing their thing and men staying home and looking after the kids there's nothing wrong with it I love it but when did we start seeing this kind of change over from, you know, I think, you know, where it used to be the more traditional outlook on the roles? Look, I think it's, it's been coming slowly but surely. I think that uh, traditionally things have always changed and we'll see that change across cultures. It's, it's not just this once where it started, this was, there was a sudden change. Mm. It was slow, it was progressive, and we see those changes happen on a daily basis. Yeah. And I also I think if you take a look into you know, the, the, the space where we live with regards to the economic situation and what is going on around us, mm. you know, with specifically because I do feel that there's a very personal thing as well, if you mm. bring it back down to the, you know, the couple in the relationship and how they view it, uh, you know, the fact that we all have to survive at the moment makes a big change in terms of how you view those gender roles. It definitely does. But Marianne, I'm to ask you this because how do couples navigate that tricky waters if let's say in the relationship the man has a more traditional approach but the woman has a more progressive approach well I think first off I would hope that those discussions and queries and concerns are addressed long before we enter into any kind of contractual relationship or marriage traditionally so it's a discussion really mm -hmm. because it's not just about gender role it's about gender identity mm -hmm. who am i as a woman mm -hmm. for example who am i as a man what are my expectations um, of my reality my lived reality and of our interactions as within a relationship so if there is some kind of discrepancy or disagreement those things need to be sorted out and smoothed over um, mm -hmm. with gentle sensitive understanding towards mm. one another long before we really enter into a serious relationship absolutely and we, you know i want to bring it back to a bit of a lighter side because <clears throat> there's always this picture painted with regards to the first date mm. um you know where couples go and normally if it's if it's a you know a, a man and a woman that goes on a date the man is expected to pay uh for the date but you know in today's modern society you know women would like to also stand up and say well this is no i'll, I'll get it what how, how, how would that impact a first date with that kind of outlook? Well... What do you feel? I, I honestly do think that there's also a movement I'm seeing online, especially on TikTok and even on Instagram, where women are also, as much as we're noticing that, as you say, mm. women, you know, it, people are becoming more progressive and moving away from traditional gender roles. But lately I've also been seeing women saying we're actually also tired of that. We want the guy to pay. We want chivalry. We want the guy to, to treat us, you know, like the women that we are. Like I was saying this morning when talking to Marianne that I would love now to, I, I used to think I was progressive in that sense and that I wanted a traditional, you know, I, I, I mean a less sort of traditional man, but I actually now realize I really want to have, be with a masculine man because I want to be treated like a lady. You know what, I think there's a fine line between being progressive and, you know, wanting to have that chivalry like you were yeah. speaking about because I think you can kind of, you know, put the two in a different category. You can. Yes, you definitely can. And I wanted to know as well, like, I mean, you know, we, we are talking about the, the man-lady relationship dynamics in this sense, but what happens when the woman in the relationship seems to have more success in her career 
And you know, you often get guys that in the beginning stages of a relationship, they are so okay with it, they're all for supporting you, and then it becomes a reality and then things change. What can couples do in that regard to, to accept or to adjust to that change? Uh, touching on the pride factor of, yeah. a, of a male as well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we see it a lot these days because um, when you are a traditional man, you might feel inferior to your partner in that space yeah. because you have that expectation that's been placed on you to step up and be the more, quote-unquote, powerful person or dominant person. But I think, like Marianne said, it comes back to having that discussion with your partner. If that's what your partner wants, then, you know, maybe it is a space for you to step into. So it's important that you both agree in that relationship what is key for you, what are the roles you play, irrespective of gender. Mm. Again, I think, I think it's such a personal to. kind yeah. of space that yeah. you... But obviously you have the outlook of the rest of the world in terms of what gender roles look like. I mean, mm. I'm just thinking back when I first met my wife, um, you know, 20 years back, she wouldn't even let me buy her a drink at the local cafe. She was that independent and it's like, the, I will take care of myself. But I was fine with it. Mm. It was great. I'm quite neutral about this, but I'm glad we're talking about this because there are still those very very strong outlooks on what the role of a man in a relationship should be, what a role should be of a woman, you know. So I'm glad we're unpacking this and getting your opinion. We are going to be back. Lots of space for you to comment on social media as well. We'd love to hear your opinion about those gender roles in modern society. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on S3 and we are challenging the gender stereotypes on your Feel Good Breakfast Show and joining us on the couch are our counsellors. We have Marianne, mental health practitioner, Lynn as well as modern day woman and content creator Nondomiso who is here with us. Now both gender roles in a relationship, it needs to be present present in fact for a healthy relationship to flourish however we need to note that those gender roles are not restricted to the gender mm. itself and that is what we want to unpack yeah so so both gender roles you know more aggressive more you know sensitive is is this a thing Do, does it require a healthy relationship to have both those gender roles present why can't both you know be you know, the aggressive type or the sensitive type? And, and how does that play out in a relationship? I'd love to know because we always hear about, ah, oh, look at them, they're a power couple, you know, they, this one's got a job, that one's got a job, they're doing their thing. But when it comes down to the, you know, I think the nucleus of the relationship, <laughs> what does that look like? Well, I would say that there is no wrong answer. There is no wrong combination of people or gender roles within a relationship because it depends on the individuals mm. and how they come together and are available to each other in the relationship. It, it doesn't matter what your gender role or gender identity is, we all go through phases of feeling more strong and confident and at times we might feel timid and sensitive. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, we all go through that experience. Mm. And within a relationship, you will notice your partner going through that cycle and they will notice you going through that cycle and it's about how we show up for each other mm. in those different states of mind or frames of being. Mm. Um, it, they, it, like I said, there really is no right or wrong. It's about well, how you negotiate your relationship. Sure. Yeah. How, how for a couple that is perhaps now struggling to negotiate that part of their relationship, what is a great way for them to start having these conversations? I think it starts with self-awareness. It, it starts with the person recognizing within themselves, what is my needs? How do I want my partner to coexist with me? And so being able to communicate that is, and, and your partner understanding that is key. Because if you can communicate, your partner can communicate, and you both understand what the need is, you'll be able to recognize whether you work or whether you don't. Mm. Yeah. We are also, of course, in the modern day society, seeing a lot more fluidity within you know, gender roles, uh, between same-sex marriages and couples, husband, wives, whatever the case may be. Maybe, Nubiso, you can, you can comment on this. I mean, how do we navigate this fluidity? How do we see this? But I, always, I almost feel like we bring it back to you know, that, that, that the internal workings between oh. two people. Yeah, and I think when you talk about gender roles, I've also been thinking about how connected these things are to the masculine and feminine energy, so to speak. And it sounds very woo-woo, but it's something I've been thinking a lot about. And I do think that we all um, do have a masculine and a feminine energy. All of us have it, whether you're a male or a female, you exist in a male or female sure. body. 
Um, and but you know, I, I think that we're, we're navigating relationships. Uh, I, I do think that it's important for me. It's been important to learn that these these two things are very real: masculine energy and feminine energy. And for us to be able to feed off of each other in a relationship in a healthy way, we need to understand how you know. Uh, these these dynamics between my masculinity and how, what it triggers in you as a, as a partner, for example. When I'm in my masculinity, you're in your in your femininity, and what does it do for our relationships? And that that plays out whether, you know, it's a woman between a man and a woman, or it's between it's in the, within a sex, same sex um, relationship. Um, sure. Yeah, I love that. I mean, this is more rhetorical, but I kind of wonder, like, how long is it going to take for us to stop being surprised when you see re roles reversed or, or you know, roles being different compared to, and I suppose it's just from what we know from growing up. Mm -hmm. But I just want to thank each and every one of you, Marianne, Nondemiso, as well as Lynn, thank you for joining us today and being part of this panel discussion. And for you at home, thank you for also being part of this discussion. We have our WhatsApp line open if you would love to weigh in. Our number is 082. No, it's not 082. <laughs> 063 408 I nearly gave you my number. Was it always your number? It's not 082. <laughs> Welcome back, you're into your feel-good breakfast show. It's lovely to hang out with you on this Tuesday morning. Now, we are wrapping up our discussion around gender roles with counsellor Marianne Gush, mental health practitioner Lynn Obrey, as well as modern-day woman and content creator Ndomiso Penyane. Now, gender roles and sexuality are intertwined in many aspects of our lives. Now, they're also very deeply ingrained in our culture and ways of life. What we see is also very helpful to remember that gender roles aren't always inherent bad but society is challenging the norm one way or another and we literally just spoke about this uh, off air a little bit you know they it's a very much an internal thing you know that's that's what came out of the, this discussion this morning but with regards to society it's like oh you want to go to a doctor mm, I don't know about a female doctor or this or that you know there's there's these little switches that go on how much are you guys seeing with regards to conversation in your respective fields when it comes to gender roles are oh, you seeing this quite a lot? Absolutely. I think uh, specifically, I mean, when clients walk into the room, when it comes to relationships, this is probably one of the most spoken about because it is about finding first that personal identity and what that means, what we've learned as we've grown up, you know, what we've seen around the world. Mm. And gender plays a big role. I think it's always been a big role for us as people mm. in society, yeah. Absolutely. I want to bring it down to, um, you know, gender roles within same-sex couples. Um, how would you unpack that, Marianne? Sure. I think the same applies really as it would within heterosexual couples because, as you so beautifully said earlier, we all have that feminine and masculine energy and it rotates. It doesn't always stay the same. We all have our moments in either. Um, so in a same-sex couple, it would play out exactly the same way it does within a heterosexual couple. It is something that needs to be firstly identified internally who am I? What is my gender identity? How do I identify? How do I express this? And then how does that affect my relationship? What are my needs? And I, th I think that's almost the most important thing that has come up this morning yeah. is really to express needs. And needs also do yeah. change, it has to be said, mm -hmm. to communicate what are my needs within the relationship and am I needing, meeting your needs as well. And I love that because I mean this is this is the I think this is the crux of the matter. It it really comes down to yes, <clears throat> there's these societal pressures from the outside, but it but it is really, you know, an internal discussion between the couple and understanding each other, and that's where it's so great. But fact remains is that, you know, with regards to society, it always casts a light yeah. over everything. It doesn't matter in what field as well. So with regards to gender roles, living in a more traditional conservative South Africa. How do we start moving away uh, to the more kind of fluid gender roles that we are speaking about? I don't know that I'm qualified to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Idea, maybe. What um, do you think? I mean, I, 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 it's nothing new. I think it, it's what Marianne has been saying. It's really about two people understanding what they they desire, what they need in a relationship, because um, we're, we're 
we we want to obviously talk about how society can shape the internal relationships between people but ultimately when people are in a relationship they they are looking for something very specific from from one another mm -hmm. um this morning we were talking about how our childhood impacts how, how we choose partners for example and so it's really personal it, and yes we want to consider society and whether society should be moving more towards being more progressive or more traditional but ultimately you know, it's for the couple, for them to define for themselves what it is that they want. Mm -hmm. Because we, in, in relationships, often we are really trying to resolve our own issues. You know, so we're trying to resolve our own personal journeys with our partners. Yeah. Um, so it, it, a lot of it has, boils, has to boil down to the two people. Mm. I want to wrap up with just maybe final words of advice. I mean, firstly, do you feel that it's a good thing that we are sh seeing this this shift within gender roles, uh, specifically in South Africa, but there is a lot, but there's still, like we speak about, you know, the fact that society is still thinking in a, in a very specific way, maybe an old school kind of way. Um, is it a good thing that we are shifting at the moment? And, and what can we, you guys say to people out there with regards to how do we look at this? I would say, um to keep in mind that change is always difficult. People always resist change because we are biologically programmed to fear things that are different. I mean, a few centuries, millennia ago, perhaps, people with red hair or green eyes were ostracized because they were different and it was danger. Anything that is different is perceived as danger. So it is okay and normal for us when we see something that is different from what we are used to, to have a bit of a, a shock reaction and to, I don't know, sh shake ourselves a little bit and go, what's, what's going on here? Mm. But then to move past that and to have an open mind and to consider that and just understand that your reaction is based on this is different, but different doesn't mean wrong. Mm. Yeah. And there's a, yeah, that's an important distinction to Absolutely. make. Absolutely. But I think, once again, you know, the most important fact is the couple in the relationship that is where it starts. You know, it doesn't matter what society says. If the two of you can work through it and you're happy with the way things are, mm. then you're gold. Yeah. I love that. Ladies, thank you very much for joining us. Such an interesting conversation this morning. We are going to be continuing this conversation with regards to gender roles, but more specifically in same-sex couples a little bit later on. So stick around for that chat.